up, everybody, and welcome to Training Tuesday in the Limitless Lifestyle in the coaching group. Um, we've got some, some background noise today. Um, I want to talk about carb cycling. And um, <clears throat> this is something that a lot of clients of ours have used in the past. Um, I've used with past clients in a lot of... I've used it with clients a lot. Um, but... And people have asked me about it because it can be used to your advantage in a lot of ways. Um, it can help kind of jumpstart the fat burning, um, the fat burning. I was trying to add a word to that, but I didn't need to. Um, it's It can jumpstart fat burning if you're in a fat loss phase um, because it kind of requires your body to utilize different energy systems. Um, it encourages the use of different energy systems because of how you're fueling it. And um, so... I kind of wanted to give a broad overview of it and then give an example of what carb cycling would look like. Okay. Because I mean, you can Google all this information. I'm going to be honest. Right. And so it's not like what I'm putting out there today is brand new science or anything like that. Um, but I did want to kind of condense it down and make it as comprehensible as possible because a lot of the information that is out there that I have found is very overwhelming and you don't really know where to start and you don't want to do the wrong thing. And so I wanted to kind of give a quick overview of what carb cycling is, who would be able to benefit from it. Um, and then you can kind of decide if it's even for you, because especially if you're someone who's trying to lose weight and lose fat, like oftentimes you're looking for anything and everything under the sun to try and solve this problem. Right. And oftentimes carb cycling will come up. And I've had people ask me like, oh, do you do carb cycling? And ultimately, like, can you use carb cycling? Yes. Is it for everyone? No. And so my kind of my prerequisites, if you're like, I want to try carb cycling. Um, my prerequisites for if you are, if carb cycling would work for you, potentially, one, first and foremost is you have to be somewhat familiar with tracking your macronutrients at a consistent level. Okay. So like if I say the word macronutrients and you don't even know what I'm talking about, you can just stop watching. The, you can just stop watching the training right now because this is not going to be beneficial and it's going to be way over your head and confusing and overwhelming. And I don't want that. Okay. So if, when I say, if you've tracked your macros before and you've been able to be consistent with it and you are a yes, you can check that box. Cool. We can continue on. Okay. Um, the second thing is if you are someone who struggles to stay at a specific calorie goal for long periods of time um, when you're in a fat loss phase. Okay. So, or you have like, uh, what am I trying to say? So, I was talking to someone today, for instance, and she has, she's really, really good during the week. And then on the weekend she struggles, right? Like that. And it's just a common thing and she can't figure out how to get away from it. Carb cycling can actually help solve that problem. Okay. And I'll talk about that in a second. The second thing. So that would be more like of a habitual. It's kind of like a habitual. Um, it helps support your current habits in a way that gets you to where you want to go results wise. Does that make sense? It will in a second. So like if your habits right now sound just like that, where you're like rock star during the week, weekend suck, this could actually help you and benefit you from a getting to your goals while still supporting your current habits to a certain degree. Okay. So that's one way this could be beneficial. And then the second way it could be beneficial is if, um, you have really hard training days where you're burning a lot of calories and then you have days where you're not burning a ton of calories. Like maybe you work out really hard on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then not so hard Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday. And so on your training days, you're really hungry or you feel like you need more of those days or sometimes your body just genuinely does need more those days. That would also be beneficial, okay? So if you notice... One benefit is more like mental, emotional, and another benefit is more physiological, okay? So like I personally have used carb cycling um, for myself 
or I've had coaches that have used it with me when I am, when I I'm training really hard three days a week and then not so hard on the off days, or I've even done something where it's kind of like a, um, a, what do they call it? I can't think of the word, but basically you have like two low days, three medium days and two cup, two high days and you build it up into, it's like a slow, slow raise and then drops back down. And I can't think of the word I was trying to use. Um, but what I'm saying is, so those are the people that would potentially benefit from carb cycling. And there's a lot of different varieties of ways you can carb cycling, carb cycle, sorry. But I do want to be clear that carb cycling is actually just caloric cycling. Okay. You're just cycling through how many calories and you're switching up how many calories you're eating per day, depending on the day. Okay. And ultimately the goal is to remain in a caloric deficit on average for the week. However, there are going to be a few days of the week where you won't feel like you're in a caloric deficit because you are, we call them like refeed days or there'll be your high carb days. Okay. So let me kind of explain this. I'll show you what I mean. Okay. At least the best that I can. So let's say Susie, Susie wants to carb cycle. Okay. She's been tracking her macronutrients like a rock star. And she notices that she has really low energy on workout days because she's eating, you know, 1400, 1400, 1500 calories, something like that. Um, and she, she feels really bad those days, right? She, she is constantly hungry. Um, or she, you know, she likes her weekends. She wants to go out to dinner and she wants to enjoy herself, right? Susie knows that if she eats 1,400 and, well, well, let's make 1,500 to make math easy. She knows that if she eats 1,500 calories a day on average, she'll be in a caloric deficit, okay? Now, this is how I have figured out where to put people on a carb cycling program in the past, okay? So you can totally do this with yourself, all right? So step one would be figuring out how many calories a day that you need to be in a caloric deficit and then how aggressive with that deficit you want to be. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't go further than like 500 calories below your maintenance, which if you don't know what your maintenance is, you need to figure that out. And you can't just use some calculator on the internet. I apologize. They are not very accurate usually. And it's legitimately just some numbers that some scientists threw together. Are they close? Probably. Like, is it a good starting place? Yes. But if you do that and you lose weight or you do that and you gain weight, you can't really blame the formula because the formula is just that. It's a formula, right? You are a human being with individual needs and individual problems, and you need to figure out what your maintenance calorie is without using a formula. And if you do want to figure that out or you want to know what your maintenance calories are, I can tell you how to figure it out, okay? But anyway, so Susie here... She knows that she eats 1,500 calories a day. She'll be in a caloric deficit, okay? She's wanting to lose weight, right? Okay, so Susie decides 1,500 calories a day. So what you would do is you take 1,500, and like I said, you're trying to stay in a, in a, in a deficit on average, okay? So what you would do is you would take 1,500, and you'd multiply that by 7, okay? So that means for the entire week... Um. Susie needs to consume 10,500 calories, okay? So here's the tricky part. The first thing you need to figure out is how many calories of those need to be protein because that's the key nutrient and the one you need to focus on, especially in a fat loss phase, okay? For most people, you want 30 to 40% of your diet in a fat loss phase, well, 35% of your diet to be protein, Okay. So if 30 to 35% of her diet is protein, that means that, uh, do 35%, that means that 3,675 3, calories come from protein per week, okay, which would be 525 a day, or for every calorie so protein for every gram of protein you get you get four calories so to figure out how many grams of protein she would need you would divide four 525 by four 
And so she would have to get 131, we'll just round up, 130 grams of protein per day. Cool? That stays the same. Then we're going to figure out fat, okay? I usually like to put people around 25% fat, 20 to 25% fat, depending on how, um, kind of depending on their habits. Like if they have a hard time staying under their fat goal, then I raise it, but Usually it's a pretty easy one as long as you're not eating out a ton, okay? So let's put it at 20 just for fun times, okay? So <clears throat> that means 300 calories a day is coming in. Fat, which means we have 40% carbs left. So 40% is carbs. This is protein, this is fat, and this is carbs, right? So 40% is carbs. 1,500 times 0. So that's 150 grams of carbs per day, okay? On average, okay? Now, to be honest, I would probably actually lower this to 35 and then bump this to 30 if you're in a fat loss phase. But we're not going to do that today, okay? So... We're at 150 grams of carbs per day. Now, if you want to carb cycle, what you would do is you would keep the protein and the fat the same, okay? And let's say that Monday through Friday, Susie wants to be in a, in a super aggressive deficit, and then Saturday and Sunday, she wants to eat whatever she wants, right? So Monday through Friday, what we're going to do is we're going to take the 10,500, Or let's say, so let's actually figure out Saturday and Sunday first, right? So Saturday and Sunday, she wants to kind of have a heyday, right? She wants to enjoy herself, eat a little bit more, enjoy the weekend, okay? So we decide on Saturday and Sunday, she's going to have 130 grams of protein because that stays the same, right? 40 grams of fat. And then for carbs, we're going to bump them to 175. Cool? So to figure that out, that would be 130 times 4. It's 525 plus 375. So that would be 1,600 calories on Saturday and Sunday. Okay. So basically, she's adding an additional 200 calories over the weekend that she's not normally consuming during the week, which means you need to subtract the 200 calories. You could even probably go higher because she eats at a deficit of 1,500, right? So you could even go 200 grams, which would be 800. So that would be 1,700? 800 plus 900. Yeah, so she could eat at 1,700 calories on the weekends, right? So some, let's say 1,700 calories, okay? So she's eating 200 grams of carbs of on the weekends. And for a lot of people, that'll either be way a lot of carbs, and a lot of you are, like, shocked at the, that number, or some of you are like, man, that's not even close <laughs> to being enough, right? Just depends. But for math's sake, so on Saturday and Sunday, she's eating an additional 200 calories per day over her calorie goal, which means we need to subtract those extra 400 calories throughout the week. Does that make sense? Which means of the five days, so she's got 400 calories that she needs to subtract, right? So she needs, she needs to subtract 80 calories from all the other days, okay? So if she wanted to just have refeed days on the weekends and not do like a range or like some medium days and some low days, then all you'd have to do is she would just eat 1,420 calories on Monday through Friday with everything being the same other than the fact that her carbs are now going to be 1,420 minus... would be 130 grams of carbs. That's it. Okay, so let me make sure I did that math right, just to confirm. So we've got 130 grams of carbs. That's 520 calories, okay? We've got 40 grams of fat, 
that's 360. And then we've got 130 grams of protein, which is 520 plus 360 plus 20. Yeah, so 1420. She's got 1420 calories for, for the week or Monday through Friday. Okay. Hopefully that makes sense. I know that was kind of like, it's a lot of numbers and a lot of math. Um, but I can't, it, that was just one example. Okay. So that's like on the weekend. So if you're going to do, um, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, then you'd have three high days and then four low days, but the math remains the same. So in a nutshell, the first step would be figure out how many calories you need to be in at a deficit on average. That's step number one. Step number two is decide what cycle you want it to look like. Do you want some refeed days on the weekends? Do you want high days on your training days? Like, what does that look like and what works best for you, right? And obviously, you need to ask yourself, why are you doing it, okay? And then the third thing that you, so after you establish that, you figure out your your calories, then you figure out your total calories for the week, right? So for Susie, it was 10,500, right? So we figured out that she needed 10,500 calories for the week. Then you put in the high days first. You subtract the total calories, you find the remainder, and then you divide the rest out over the low days, okay? You can get super complicated with this. You can have low days, mid-range days, high days. Like, I've done it all. It's all really fun. Um, the only time, the only thing is, like, this isn't going to work. If, if you cannot keep a calorie goal at, like, like, let's say... Like if you were our clients, right, if you were a client of ours, depending on where your mental state is and like what your current goals are and what phase of the program you're in, um, if you are at a point where like we can give you like a maintenance calorie goal and you can't even track it well enough to hit it, then like this would be pointless, right? But if you are consistently hitting your numbers and you're not seeing results or you're consistently over on two days a week or you're consistently hungry three days out of the week because you're training on those days, then this is something to consider, okay? Because it's really crazy how our body starts to use different energy systems when you fuel it differently. Um, and it just kind of stresses things different in a way that, like, it kind it can kickstart things, which is kind of fun. But um, if you have any more questions about this, just let me know because I know it can be, <laughs> it can be a lot. It's a lot of, numbers it's a lot of figuring out um if you need help figuring it out just let me know but that's kind of the premise of carb cycling why you would use it when you would use it and how you would use it cool let me know if you have any questions about it um or if you are a client and you're like kayla that sounds like me and i want to do that um then cool if you're not a client and you are interested in learning more or you want to do a free game plan call and we'll actually like sit down with you and um map things out for you and help you get started for free. And I promise I'm like for free, for free. Um, then just comment below and we'll get you set up. Cool. Have a wonderful day.